All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining us this afternoon, and welcome to our February 8th edition of our Ohio Career Readiness Leaders Network Meetup. Um, so if this is your first time joining our, our network meetup, thank you for attending, and we hope that this provides you some opportunities to network with other folks across the state of Ohio who are leading career readiness initiatives. If this is your second, third, or even sixth time joining us, um, welcome back. I hope you've noticed that we've attempted to add folks to a calendar invite to try to help um, give folks a central place to find links to join and to be reminded of the, of the monthly meetups. If you're not on our calendar invite and you would like to be, Kayla is going to share with you a, a link at the end of the presentation for our feedback form. And on the feedback form is a place to drop your email if you'd like to sign up to be a part of that calendar link. Um, some important logistical information, uh, the way that we're structuring our meetups moving forward is on our Ohio Department of Education events and training resources page, which I'm going to drop the link to that in the chat here for our meeting. If you head to that event and training resources page, you'll find a Word document agenda for today's meeting. And that agenda has all of the links that you'll need in order to access and participate in today's session. Uh, so we do have some interactive ways that we want you to um, discuss some key discussion questions together. So if you go ahead and download that link for the agenda on our event and training resources webpage, which that link is in the chat, you should download a Word version of today's agenda and it will take you to this Jamboard. So if we can go ahead and get everybody to download the agenda and then click on the link to this Jamboard that Kayla is showing us right now, we'll start to see when people are accessing based on uh, kind of the, bumble the bubbles that pop up. So again, we will be using Jamboard for today's session. We will be using the post-its and some ways to interact virtually together. So if you can go ahead and download the agenda from the event and training resources page, to access the Jamboard, which I'm not seeing anyone jumping on there just yet. Oh, there we go. We got a squirrel. Thank you, squirrel. Oh, thank you, skunk. That's a good one, right? <laughs> um, looks like people are joining. Perfect. So we're going to download the agenda, access the Jamboard. And today's topic of discussion, the topic of today's meetup, is turning career advising policy into practice. So now that all of you have accessed that event and training webpage, you'll see that the recordings for all of our prior meetups are on that page. Today's session is building from last month's session on career advising policies. So if you weren't, if you weren't able to attend January session, there's some really good information in there about brainstorming ways to leverage career advising policies. Today's session is all about turning those policies into practice. So I'm happy to turn over our program today to Kayla and Amy, who will introduce themselves along with the rest of the planning team. Thanks. Amy, you can go ahead and start. Oh, thank you. I'm Amy Herker. I'm from the ESC of Northeast Ohio. I'm the career and um, innovation specialist there, and I'm happy to join you today. And Cassie, I'm sure you already introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Kayla Mack. I'm an education program specialist in the Office of Career Connections at the Department of Ed. And Brenna or Michelle, or if you guys are on, if you want to introduce yourselves. This is Brenna Bartlett. Uh, I am an assistant director in the Office of Career Technical Education at the Ohio Department of Education. Good afternoon, everybody. And also, um, if you haven't already started, in the chat, um, we're, get, just we're getting some funky feedback, Kayla. Yeah. Um, it sounds like I don't hear it now, so thank you for being muted. Um, if you get an opportunity, please introduce yourself in the chat with your name and, and the organization that you're with. And we will go ahead and get started. So how we wanted to start today's convening was to set the stage 
and around this idea of recentering career advising. And we understand that the foundational framework for career advising in Ohio is designed to support students in developing a vision and realistic plan for their futures across the K-12 spectrum. Uh, and we do this through what we call the Career Connections Framework, which of course is aligns to those many efforts around college and career readiness to support students in becoming productive and engaged citizens. So we have an opportunity in this current educational climate we're in, right? And we found that during current pandemic times, this glare of disproportionality and access and opportunity within the nation's educational systems has in some cases been received as either a glass half empty or a glass half full. Uh, but thinking beyond the framework of career advising facilitates this perspective of fixing the water source rather than accepting a half cup of water. And today we're going to talk about the, the Revised Ohio Career Advising Toolkit uh, because it's designed to be a catalyst for really transforming policy into actionable, locally driven, equitable, student-centered career advising plans. It is the opportunity to fix the water source. And we understand, you know, when we're thinking about policy into practice, we know that when we think about policies, understanding that the policy's purpose is to know that it is the, the high level view of the actions, the expected actions on the ground, what you and I are doing day to day. Uh, but this gives us a, a chance to really think about the building we stand on to achieve that policy view. So when we're thinking about the idea of policy again into practice, this revised toolkit is designed to support schools, districts, and educators in understanding the importance of career advising and the factors within or the building between that I'd mentioned before that truly impact and help shape the lives of the students that we serve. And within the toolkit, uh, there's quite a few different templates and, and resources that are included. Uh, we have our career advising plan toolkit, uh, I mean template, and this resource is designed to complement the engagement activities through the career advising toolkit to support schools, uh, schools and districts and educators in converting those policies into actionable plans. It can be a tool for change. Uh, it can be a tool for development and implementation of an advising plan and also to inform district career advising policies. Uh, the template is designed to really be a, a good resource for crafting an effective student success and graduation plan. Uh, and in addition to this template, we also have our student success and graduation plan templates. Um, the current graduation plan template is available under the um, graduation requirements uh, website on ODE's um, web page on ODE's website. And what we're planning to do is model that into uh, the additional elements that are required in a student success plan so that we're not recreating the wheel or um, creating uh, transition issues where you've got this current template that doesn't really marry well with what is expected for our graduation plan. So we want those to be fluid within one another. Uh, so that template itself is soon to come. It's actually in development right now. Uh, and then we also have the career advising resource matrix that's being designed around the toolkit. And this is a list of uh, each of the resources and tools that are found within the career advising toolkit. Uh, many of which are uh, inter introduced in the toolkit have that student level, uh, has student level impact and can contribute to meaningful student success and graduation plans. And what's really nice about this matrix that's being designed is it becomes a livable uh, document. So as additional research comes out uh, around you know, education in this new climate, uh, we get to add that and you know different partnerships and in, in agencies and um, across you know across our state that are truly putting in place some very well refined resources to support students in being successful whether that's SEL or and how it can be integrated into career advising um, and you know things like that so that there's further reach in making a one place hub for creating those connections or across 
how we are engaging students in career advising instead of everything being scattered in. It's up to you guys to kind of figure out how to pull this thing together. So it's in hopes to kind of create a hub for all of those things that help support what we do. And so throughout this toolkit, um, we're looking to broaden the lens of career advising and, and going deeper into those components of action in which we do in the schools at the district level uh, that truly influence how we are engaging with students. And these things currently could potentially already be happening, but this gives us an opportunity to think deeply about each of these pieces across the framework thinking about it in uh, the perspective of career awareness, thinking about it in the perspective of career exploration, and thinking about it in the perspective of um, career planning, and being intentional about looking at what is currently happening and where the potential is to, to grow in these spaces. And of course, um, Equity is something that is truly interwoven um, throughout the toolkit process uh, so that schools, districts, and educators can gain insight to the significance, importance, and position equity plays in both policy and practice development. Because um, when informed by an equity lens and with an understanding of culturally responsive practices, the actions and solutions selected within the Career Advising Toolkit will be more attuned to the, the needs of all students. And again, so within the toolkit, there are these pieces where um, educators will have an opportunity to really think about career advising through an equity lens. Um, there's intentional components within the toolkit for you to stop and think with an equity lens about the decisions and, and practices that you're considering for the different areas of career advising. Uh, because in fostering a culture of supporting the whole child and putting into practice in each child our future vision, the toolkit um, has that cumulative, uh, communi that's such a hard word for me, cumulative equity lens section. <laughs> and um, it, it's really an opportunity for that reflection and evaluation of the decisions for the development of a quality career advising plan. And so at this time, we want to do an activity with you guys. Um, and in doing this, you, you'll see here on the side of the, um, the Jamboard, this little sticky note. And we want you to just reflect on how do you define an equity lens? What does it mean to you? Um, and you can think of it it could be from from any aspect or perspective, right? That could be a personal, a, a global and an educational lens perspective on equity. Um, but just you as a person, what does the when you hear the words equity lens, what is how are you defining it in, in what you do in your day to day or, or what does it mean to you? Um, so if we can go ahead and start plugging that in using the sticky note, you just click on there. You add your sticky note and it will submit. So I'll add one too.
Wonderful. So some of these uh, I'll just read off just so that we can get a glimpse and thank you all for adding these in here. Um, so providing each individual person what they need, uh, making sure that the process is inclusive to allow all people to thrive in the program. Making all career options available to all students. Um, so this is wonderful and as you're doing this, this is kind of the the mindset that is fostered in the toolkit. It's taking that pause moment and thinking about in this space in career advising, how is it impacting the students we're serving? What do we have in place? Is it is it, a, is it do we have an opportunity here within career advising to assure that all students um, have access and potential opportunities to all career options that are available at our school? Um, and also thinking deeply about the processes that we have in place, are they truly inclusive? And what does inclusive mean when we use that term in our practices and policies? Um, because equity and inclusion are two very different things. Um, and it's interesting how they are different. And it's something that I always think about when we talk about inclusion is um, it's, be, it's more than just being invited it's more than just being invited to dance. Um, it's being part of the planning committee for the party. Uh, so that's the difference between inclusion. Um, is that's kind of how it made sense to me, like, oh, okay, that makes sense. You're not just inviting somebody to something, but you're inviting them to that first conversation, a part of the planning committee. Um, and that goes back to just student and community voice and making sure as we are thinking equitable that they are included, that inclusive piece is a part of our equity work. So wonderful. So another question for you guys, and again, if you can use your post-its, um, if we can indicate just where you feel you are in integrating equity into your career advising practices. Um, so some of us may be in this developmental stage of equity and career advising activities for all of our students. And some might have already started within the last few years or it might have been something that's just been embedded in some areas of your engagement with students. Um, and then some might be in a place where it has always been part of the practice where there's tangible outcomes that you can associate to the, the equity um, policy and practices that you have currently in place in your schools. So if you could use your sticky notes to kind of just place where you are uh, on the timeline, that would be helpful. Um, you, um, you, you have you to have put, to put, put at least one, one uh, symbol, uh, symbol like an X or something, X or something, in, something your in your post-it post note as having, post having a blank post-it. Post post Thank you. So that's great. Um, I think this is a great time to be in that developmental space for um, equity and career advising because right now we know in, in our in our educational climate there is an abundance of resources um, and opportunities to really highlight this space in education. Um, and then those who are currently providing equitable career advising uh, activities for some students um, this is a great space to think deeply about what you currently have embedded in your policies and practices and um, 
opportunities for growth and expansion of what is currently available or looking at your data to say is what what we have in place is it truly impacting our most vulnerable populations um, and giving time to revisit those areas too and and, and grasping a hold of all of these resources and, and good policies and practices that are coming from all over the place to help support this work and strengthen the career advising that we're currently doing with students. Um, so there is no right or wrong place to be, <laughs> most definitely. Um, but uh, the fact that we're, we're taking steps forward to really um, be in a good, be transparent and in a vulnerable space to create quality career advising and education for all students right now. And, of course, it's a growing moment for all of education, um, which I think to me is always is a great place to be in. Um, and it's a good an exciting time, stressful, but exciting time. And so I, I thank you for making this note that you do have it's it's open to all, but you you have struggle right now with getting all students involved. Um, so that's that's a good place to be in to say one looking reflective um on the practices that you're having like when i get in these spaces i always think within my sphere of influence where do i have opportunity to to change that narrative um looking and analyzing what i'm doing and what we're doing as um, an organization to support students uh before looking outwardly to say you know students aren't aren't engaging um but what can we do to change the narrative? What haven't we tested yet? Um, and I'm not saying that you you haven't done that, um, but because it's an overwhelming thing to think about, like we have all of these things, but we're still not reaching them. And uh, sometimes it's just an inner reflective to say within our sphere of influence, what can we shift and change to help support? Um, so this is really good. Thank you guys. All right. And so this next activity, uh, we're going to think about, you know, how are you or would you use equity as a lens in your career advising activities for students? Uh, so this space is just giving you guys opportunity to uh, think about where you are within your sphere of influence and how you would like to utilize this idea of an equity lens and what you're doing or help support programs or initiatives that you're currently engaging in, um, making step forward making steps forward in this area of equity. So if you wouldn't mind sharing your thoughts and ideas in this space, it would be great. And thank you for this comment that um, all programs and policies and districts should have this lens uh, to ensure movement forward for all students. Um, and what's nice at the district level is we have these district advisory councils, which should, you know, we would hope that it is a collection of um, business and community partners that are reflective of uh, the communities that you serve as educators. So having them as part of this conversation and 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 idea around equity like we have so many professionals at our fingertips using these business advisory councils to support the narrative of you know keeping this equity lens as part of the foundational process of um, formulating career advising um, activities whether it's programming or internships or pre apprenticeships uh, into like the actual classroom um, so this, so that's really, really good that you mentioned like at this whole district lens. Um, 
Yes, yeah, so diverse pathways, speakers, programming that shows potential connections to students traditionally underrepresented. Um, I will say the National Associ Association for Partnerships and Equity, NAEP, uh, some of you guys might be familiar, uh, but they have a lot of content about how to support students in um, how do we engage students in um, career pathways where they are uh, they're non-traditional if you will they're they has there's a underrepresented population uh, of a particular uh, student group in these areas and how do you how do you help support facilitate um, positive um, connections to these other pathways uh, and other additional areas of equity that could very much so support uh, educators in looking from a lens of equity and supporting students and engaging in different pathways. I really like this that your sophomores take a class focused on exposing them to a variety of post high school options that is inclusive of um, graduates who uh, didn't do the traditional four year degree, um, but maybe went a different pathway and are still highly successful. I think having um, that and that's diversity, right? Having that idea of diverse pathways. We talk about it. We try to push our kids at looking differently, but it's great that they can see somebody not so much older than them being successful in those pathways. It helps them make connections. That's awesome. Yeah, and this is something that we hear, right? Um, and, and it's not necessarily intentional sometimes that schools have a tendency to choose a particular students for particular career fields. We need to, uh, schools to inform all students of all options, right? And that goes back to um, our unconscious unconscious bias sometimes because um, nobody's out there just being malicious. It's 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 just who we are in our human nature. Our minds are cat like to categorize things and do things in a, in a very structured process. And that's when unconscious bias um, can come in play and even stereotype. I know that sounds like a bad word, but it's what our brains do to help categorize stuff. Um, and, and that then impacts how we engage with students when we're not aware of those those biases or, or how to identify them within ourselves. So when we think about these things that happen where we see this trend of a particular student group only being in uh, introduced to certain career fields, well, there's something going on there and it's 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 hard but easy to break the cycle and it starts with a conversation of, hey, let's think about how we as educators are doing this process. Let's think about our unconscious bias here. Um, so this is really good. I want to thank you guys for sharing your comments here um, and we will move forward because I don't want to take up all of our time, but this is a, I know this is something we could certainly continue down for a while. Uh, so I'm going to pass it off to Cassie to talk a little bit more about the career advising alignment for educators and school counselors. So one thing we want to make sure we highlight when we talk about career advising is is where you can highlight these things in current I guess, does existing anyone policy. Else have any other questions so um, the one thing that I with? would say is there are lots of opportunities to align what standards are required for high quality educators and school counselors to align these career and academic exposure and planning activities within um, those OTES and those different evaluation systems. So when you as career readiness leaders are thinking about um, how to align policy and practice or how to turn policy into practice, Standard two in both the school counselor standards and the educator standards very clearly articulate a connection to career um, and academic development and exposure. So if you look at educator standard 2.5, for example, teachers connect content to relevant life experiences and career opportunities. So often, you know, there's this challenge of how do we how do we expand our staffing to do these activities? How do we 
make sure that we can um, have the right adult to student ratio when we're doing these things. And so really thinking about how to leverage your school counselors in your building, um, because this is a this is a key pillar for school counselors. And then also how you empower your educators to have these conversations with students is key. So our next kind of discussion activity we have on our next slide is about how you're doing that in your current schools that you work with, um, or how could you? So let's just take a minute to brainstorm. How could you or how are you using career advising activities in school counselor evaluations and teacher evaluations? So we can just use that same post-it note function. So the post-it that was just published, this is a really smart way to think about this. So in, in the system of school counseling across the state of Ohio, there's this real need to have a comprehensive counseling plan. And you can even do that same thing as a subset within your comprehensive um, counseling plan to have a comprehensive career plan. So thinking about how those things work together is, is very smart. It would, it would also be helpful if those of you on the call just haven't thought about that yet to to post that so you know even just like we haven't thought about embedding career advising related activities into teacher or school counselor evaluations we'll get back to you that would also be just helpful information to know too Community college have not explored this. I'm not sure exactly what the evaluation system for faculty or career advising services at a, at a community college is, but you could consider the same thing. So, you know, every organization has some type of an employee evaluation. So, you know, if you're working, if you're joining us from a workforce development board or um, a county job and family services, thinking about how these activities play into um, just a general employee evaluation system might work. Oh could be added to the evaluation for the 21st century grant. Yep. So often, and, and one of the reasons we wanted to highlight this today um, is because you know we, we don't want these career advising activities or this career policy requirement to feel like something that's just being added on to the plate. Uh, so the more that we can illuminate for you where, where there's alignment across things that also have to be done um, and how career advising activities can really bring them to life is the goal here. Because uh, again, you know, career advising is incredibly important for all students to experience. So in order to lighten the load of that of the folks who are deploying these activities like yourselves, we want to make sure that we highlight where there is clear policy alignment so that you're satisfying multiple policy requirements um, through these career advising activities and it doesn't it doesn't feel like an add on. So if you if you would like more information about this or you want to you know tackle this idea of aligning policies across uh, career advising systems and other things that your school district or you and your role might be required to do, you know, we're always happy to be thought partners in that. Um, and if you want to indicate that on the survey, which can be found at the bottom of your agenda for our feedback of this session, uh, we'd be happy to to do that with you. Um, feel free to reach out to myself or any, any person on our team here, uh, and we can schedule some time to really dig into some of your policy requirements to see how we can leverage career advising activities to satisfy them. So thanks for those of you that were able to share. Thank you, Cassie. Um, so I wanted to just talk about what can you expect next? Um, when we're thinking about this new idea or 
expanding the ideas of career advising. Um, we are planning to change the career advising landing page on the Career Connections web page on the High Department of Education's website uh, to reflect this idea of a toolkit and that being the, the operation or, or function of how we are providing supports and resources around career advising. Um, and then also in support of this toolkit, we will be hosting some summer virtual workshops to help support district schools and educators in navigating the toolkit and creating these career advising plans so that uh, we want to provide workshops around really transitioning these plans, these uh, career advising policies into plans because we know this right now that we are in this space that we're in is the biannual for um, career advising policies um, and it is expected that our our school boards of education are to post their revised plans by the September of this year. So we want to give time and opportunity for for everyone to come together and really walk through this toolkit and create some more more in depth thought around these plans, these policies that are being established and, and what the plans or action of engagement look like within the schools in the um, the classroom. So those things are up and coming and certainly just uh, stay connected to Career Connections and uh, as additional information is shared out. Um, and one of the other things that I wanted to talk about today are the current engagement and advising resources. Um, if you were not able to attend any of our previous events, uh, I wanted to share some highlights of, of what those event topics were that you can find in our, on our um, education and training uh, web page on the Career Connections website. Uh, just to review reflective of some of the engagement opportunities that you currently have available to review and potentially implement in what you're doing um, with students around career advising. There's some really good um, content there and resources that I wanted to bring to light. Um, and also today we certainly want to give you guys an opportunity to um, provide information on tools and resources that you can use immediately or start planning to engage students um, now. Uh, and so to do that, I wanted to give Amy Harker an opportunity to share with you guys about planning for a virtual opportunity fair. And um, Amy, I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to you now and I'll, I'll move these slides and you let me know when you want me to move to this the other Jamboard. You're muted. My nemesis, thank you. Um, I'm very excited to be a part of the opportunity to do this career fair. Oftentimes we have career fairs in person and we had to think about you know, pivoting this year and see how we could do it. And so oftentimes we'll have a career fair and then we'll have some other kind of success nights or parent nights. Well, what we've done is kind of combine those all together and with the um, three E's we're talking about, education, employment, and enlistment, we, did, we decided to have three different focus days and we're just spending two hours at a time with each of those because we didn't want to uh, take too terribly long with the students, but we wanted to give them an opportunity to really dive into the topics we'll be discussing. So first of all, this is, um, if you flip to the uh, next slide, Kayla, um, we had designed this first one just for the first ring schools in Ohio, which is 17 districts, including the uh, Cleveland Metropolitan Schools. And then when we got together, um, we have what's called a career readiness task force. And it's, a, it's one representative from each of those 17 districts. And we came together and said, what is it that we need? And listed those needs out. And so that became our why. And then, um, we had one school district, Maple Heights, which has always had kind of this um, hiring fair where Cedar Point would come in and uh, do their hiring for the summer. And so we combined that um, together with what we're going to do. So next slide, Kayla. Um, so we did a brainstorming session and then we did um, 
we had ended up having then our task force, which was our boots on the ground people giving us sound advice as to what's going to work for them. And then we had a steering committee. Really good to make sure you get input from the boots on the ground people. I think if we didn't go back to them and we just did our steering committee of the representatives and the, the administrative, administrative um, roles, I think that we may have um, done things that would not fit into their schedules and would not have uh, met their needs. So really important to gather those needs first. Um, I have a few things I wanted to do with you, and I'm going to see if I can have you stop sharing Kayla and me start because that would be very helpful. And I think it will work if I select the right window to show this time. So let me see if this will work. Can you see my screen? Yes, all right, perfect. So then I'm going to, um, as always, um, I started with, like I said, the boots on the ground people. And so we went through and I did a, a jam board, something that we're familiar. So we decided that we were going to set our purpose and our why, which I talked to you about already. And then we broke that down into the areas that we needed to do to that we wanted to focus on. And it came out to be these areas on the post it notes. And then I had them just contribute ideas and we had a nice discussion and then we categorized things together that went together and we ended up coming up with because someone else had a future opportunities fair and another one had um, this E for me type of opportunity. We combined all those ideas together to start to formulate where we wanted to go with this. We also had a page where we said what what are the things that we need to keep in mind as we we plan this? And of course, students with disabilities, um, our bandwidth, our you know our registration process all came up out of that conversation. And then we we talked about okay, we have these people at the table, but who really else needs to be a part of this to make sure that we're uh, encompassing all that we need. And so then as we move forward, we came up with some sound ideas and we put that all on kind of this task sheet, which is um, where we put all of our ideas. And this task sheet really started out to be less organized than this. And then as we went along, we kept organizing it more and more till we got it to the point where we liked it. And then as we're working on things, I wanted to introduce to you today something called Trello. And not only does Trello work for this kind of planning activity, but it works for career activities, um, activities you're doing with students. And when you pop into these activities on Trello, I'm going to take you to what it, it looks like first, because if you don't look at it, what it looks like first, you think, where is everything when you get on? So this is the first way a Trello board works. It's completely blank and there are way, they, um, ways to set it up. So what you do is you start adding your list here. So once you get your list, and I'll pop over to my board where I made my list already, we decided we were going to have three days. So we, had, we put, made a list for day one, day two, day three, things that we wanted to deal with with scheduling and registration, our group interview, our business organization board, and then we divide it out into our people. And so everybody that was able to take something um, and their responsibility, for example, I'm just going to show you how things easily move. So um, for example, parent orientation is going to be my responsibility. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to move it over to my board and then if I wanted to resort back, I labeled everything by days. So my days are all color coded so I know what is going on on what day. And then inside one of these, for example, I'm going to pull up um, somebody's task. So Steve is in charge of registration and he happens to be a volunteer organization. And we made a little list for things that had to be done. Uh, the uh, the the website link had to be sent to Charlene, the registration had to be done. And so as he finished those things, he just check marks those off. And so then me as a event organizer can go into all those things and see who's who's doing what they need to do, whose list are checked off and who is complete. 
And actually, I this is a copy of the board because ours ours is essentially all sitting at the to done level. So when Steve finishes that task, then he goes over and he'll move it over to the task that's completed for day one. So there we have, um, and it's just so easy to keep track of everything and be able to check on things that our people are working on within the tr the task board. Um, so that's what Trello is. It's it's a way to have. If you think about them as white individual little um, uh, like huddle boards, I don't know if you've used those, but it, um, if you have chart paper and you have a to do list on each chart paper and then what it allows you to do is each component on that to do list is a post it note and it allows you to move that post it note from one thing to the next. So it's a great way to organize. It also works great for like a project you're doing with students so that you can follow along and know how far along they are in the project. So that's called Trello. And so once we had all that done, um, it kind of came out to be um, settling on a timeline. And then we got it to the point where we got it to the final aspect, which is can locate it. Oh, here it is. My uh, the flyer. So this flyer will be sent out tomorrow to our first ring districts and it discusses everything that's on it. The main things that we captured is making sure that we had it, um, an engaging personality for each day. So we we invited some local celebrities and Ramona Robinson is a TV um, personality. She was an anchor woman on and she also is an author. So we have her talking about communication skills and um, as part of building your career um, resume. Um, I'm going to be talking about the Ohio Residence Seal and the Military Seal. Um, Ken Hanneman, who is going to be telling his story, his story is really an interesting one. He started in an entry level position in a fast food restaurant and now he sits as the vice president of the organization of um, so it's a really interesting success story that I want the kids to hear and then we have two people that are going to be presenting on one day we're going to be doing interview skills the second day we're doing resume building skills and so or excuse me I have that in reverse resume building skills the first day and interview skills the second day but what we want to have happen is we want the kids to be able to bring their resume to the second day because we have a, a plethora of businesses that are going to be available that they can submit their resumes to for summer work and they're going to be setting up interviews post uh, after the fact so that the kids will be able to go and interview with them um, to get summer employment and then Jimmy Malone who is a radio personality he is going to um, do a mentoring opportunity with students so 30 of our students that will um, be in a drawing will get the opportunity to meet with him 10 students at a time to get a mentoring opportunity and he's going to stick with those kids and uh, talk them through their career growth through their high school journey so I thought that was a really cool thing that he volunteered to do so um, one of the big things that came up is because we have 17 school districts and we're probably going to have over a thousand students that are going to be um, part of this process. We had to start thinking about how does that look having all that those kids present. And so what we've decided to do is go outside of our organization to help boost our number of students that can register. So we're going to be able to have over a thousand students in this process and be a part of it and participate because we've got a volunteer or a nonprofit organization that's willing to support that for free. So we've utilized a lot of nonprofits to help get this off the ground. And so just going over so you can see a little bit about uh, what each day entails. Our education day, of course, Ramona is going to speaking on building that communication skills, resume writing skills. Uh, our local community college is going to be speaking about their education opportunities. And again, I'm going to be speaking about the high readiness seal on the employment day. Ken's going to tell his story and and Rich and Kim are going to talk about um, interviewing and then our businesses are going to present 
their available positions for the summer and then the interviewing opportunity. On the third day, we're going to have an enlistment and services career opportunity where um, I have two panels that are going to present. Our first one is going to be a service panel. That service panel is going to be the Cleveland e EMS, firemen, policemen, highway patrol, and the sheriff. And we have a set of questions and I'll moderate those. And then we have um, some discussion that's going to be on the ASFAB. And we're going to point them in the direction of the sample ASFAB that sits on our High Means Jobs website. And then we're going to have a military panel present about um, enlistment and what that is like and how to make that decision. And then afterwards, we'll talk about the military enlistment seal and those options that are available for graduation. So it uh, was an awesome undertaking with the, the fabulous groups that I worked with, but I think under it all is making sure that we align it with our career readiness plan, our career advising plan, and um, like I said, the, the people that work within the school districts, their, their voices need to be heard to make sure that we do, uh, that we're meeting the needs of a, a variety of different school districts needs. Um, I don't know if there are questions in the chat box, Kayla, that I could answer, but if not, that's um, that's kind of the an E for me opportunity fair um, in a in a quick second. I don't see anything in the chat. Um. And I'll stop sharing so that. Um, you can share once again. OK. And if you can mute, Amy, I think that's where the echo is coming from. OK, so what I wanted to share with you guys in closing today is just to pull up um, our, our conclusion and our feedback. I'm going to share this feedback link with you in the chat if I can get this figured out. Um, sorry, I lost you guys. There we go. So I'm going to put the feedback link in the chat. Uh, if you guys would please provide your feedback and a few of the things that we wanted to talk about um, in closing today are some of the ODE updates. Um, if you are not familiar with the Remote edX Industry Recognized Credential Grant, um, that link is actually in the downloaded um, agenda that you should have today. Uh, but just an update that that grant closes on February 12th. Uh, so if there's something that you're interested in, that date is coming up fairly soon. Um, and also there is a, another link to a report that went out for uh, partnering with the attainment coalition and leveraging bridging Ohio's workforce gap. It's a really good read, especially for us in this career advising space. Um, and then I also want to in the chat put in the sign up. For um, our career connections and ed connect updates so that you guys have those as well. Um, with that, I want to open it up if anybody has. We have about five minutes left. If anybody has any questions, um, comments, or some suggestions, I think I saw a hand raised. Um, please do either just unmute yourself. And there was and a question in the chat about the grades. The grade. What grades were invited? Well, for that's the e for me opportunity, um, that's all high school students because we're going to have entire classrooms tuning in. Um, it could be anywhere from a ninth grader to a 12th grader, but for the actual hiring, um, some of those are going to be uh, directed at um, juniors and seniors just because of the age um, that the, the entry level position needs.
Kayla, you're muted. It certainly is. Like, I wish something like would just big pop up to just say you're muted. It would be very helpful. Um, <laughs> uh, but we do want to thank you all today for joining us. We hope that it was in, in very informational, that you guys are excited about the toolkit that is up and coming to help support you in developing these career advising plans and know that we are here as a support arm to help you through that process. We hope that um, the resources and the idea of an E for me opportunity event was something that sparks your interest and something you are considering to maybe duplicate or come in partnership with Amy and team to figure out how you can do that for the students that you're serving. Uh, yes, there will be a recording available to you in our education training um, web page on OD's website. I don't know if somebody has that link readily available to where they can find all of our recordings, but we will make sure that gets in there. Um, and please do in the interim, if you have any questions, suggestions, or um, ideas that you want to bring to our team in this space of career advising, uh, especially around equity, certainly reach out to us. We are always open and available um, to be a support in like Cassie said, a thought partner in this process. Thanks, Thank everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Shake your time.